PC Perspective's coverage of CES 2016 is brought to you by Logitech. See the latest gaming peripherals at gaming.logitech.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the PC Perspective podcast. This is a special edition PC Perspective on the couch. Moving closer. PC Perspective Don't be afraid. on the couch. Do you notice it's a dark leather-bottomed couch? <laughs> mm, it is. Tell me more. On a platform. He's- Ryan conducted interviews earlier today. People have been, yeah. Uh, don't look those videos up. Don't yeah. look up the couch vids. Video, no. those aren't good. Uh, this is uh, our annual pilgrimage to Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show. This is the 2016 edition because it is the year 2016, uh, as it turns out. Barely, but it is. Uh, we actually came in on Saturday, hung out for a little while. Nothing much really happened on Sunday. We'll, we met with Lenovo. We'll talk about them uh, and all the stuff that they showed off. And then we had a couple of things today, but not a whole lot. But we wanted to get started doing uh, the CES rig, making sure this works, um, and uh, make sure we have a uh, uh, live stream going. And we do. So it's successful. Um, so how's everybody doing? How you doing? Good. Man? Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of sleep. Right, right up the stuff. You, we you are getting a lot of sleep? Yeah. Oh, we, I don't know. So far. We, <laughs> not the noises I've been hearing. <laughs> He's getting a lot of bedtime. Yeah. 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 We, haven't, uh, we haven't had a whole lot of like early things to do yet. That changes tomorrow morning for Tuesday and Wednesday for sure. Um, How early are we talking here? Like 9 o'clock. Oh. Having to oh. be somewhere at 9 o'clock, which means you got to leave you gotta wake up at seven time frame. Because now ca- taxi lines are going to get long and obnoxious and... Uh, all that type of stuff. Uh, so let's just talk about real quick what we uh, what we have seen, what we've done here at the Consumer Electronics Show. I will say my first impressions that this show is very quiet so far. It, you know, is, it hasn't started. Yeah, but it's always, it always has not started by now, and I feel like I mean this would usually be our Saturday. Yes, yeah, or Sunday. Sunday. Sorry. Yeah. So what was it like? We went to an NVIDIA press conference. It was interesting that we'll talk about. Uh, but there's like, there's no Asus press conference. There's no Gigabyte press conference. There's no MSI press conference. Like the normal guys that we kind of deal with and talk about. It's kind of like we're between GPU and CPU launches. Yeah, like, like Asus had a, Asus out. had one planned and scheduled, and they kind of changed their mind. They said, you know what? Turns out we can do this whenever we want, and you guys will still pay attention when they're 100% correct. Yep. Okay, so. I think they are, Apple. Yeah. Ugh, yeah, uh, everybody wants to be. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so first up, we went to Lenovo, uh, and I'll have you guys help me r- help remind me what we saw because they had a as Lenovo does, they launched like a hundred things. Yeah, and we have a hundred posts on our site right now. You can read. That's right, and you should. You should go to pcper.com slash ces uh, and, and view all the Lenovo news with and, a few other things peppered in. Between. Right, look at the that's our Lenovo channel, as it turns out, uh, and um, sponsored. By Logitech. Sponsored by Logitech. They are sponsoring our, our coverage here this week by making sure I can afford to bring you people out. So it costs that. quite a lot. Yes. You guys are expensive. Like paying for meals, I thought taking my wife out for dinner was a lot. Man. No. You guys eat a lot of California Pizza Kitchen, as it turns out. I should have had the soup last night. You should have had the or soup. Or we eat half of it. Yeah, we did waste it. If we go back, we're going to get three pizzas for five I'll say their domestic beer prices are a little. Unrealistic. A little on the NFL high side. game prices. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're high. Uh, so we went to see Lenovo. Um, I think by far the coolest thing we've seen, saw there, or seen have seen yet is probably the um, – Okay, let me do X this. one. Hold on. I'm going to do this. Okay. Because I, it took me nine tries recording Think- the video. The yeah. Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Correct. with the OLED screen. Yes. Um, it's it's the, a, first, the first big OLED that I think I've seen yet. I didn't see any last year. I've seen for sure. Yeah, there might have been like prototypes and stuff being demoed, but like this is a consumer product that's going to be available in April. Well, the, there are the LG 55 inch OLED OLED TVs, which you can see at like Best Buy and stuff. Josh's never been to a Best Buy though. I have not. Wait, they do have those? Yeah, OLEDs. Okay, I just 1080p and 4K for, for like 1999. It's really beautiful. Okay, totally blew by me. It okay. would it would shame your TV. But, but there's no, there's not there's you been nothing in TV. between phones and TVs yet. Okay. So now we're getting into that okay. good space. So I mean it's a it's a uh is it a 13 inch screen or 12 inch? Maybe a 14. 13 or 14. I think the X1's a 14. Okay. Um 13 3. 13 3. So it's 20, gone back and forth, I oh, think. 2560 I by 1440 resolution OLED. And so they did that thing where uh you know they give you the two machines and you open one up that's IPS and they open one up that's OLED and you can immediately tell the difference, right? We were all in the room together and like 
you kind of have had that oh shit moment of oh wow that looks great the blacks are solid black the brights are right you can't tell the bright. bezel from the black in fact the bezel's brighter because it's reflecting light out of the room right and then right. the oled is darker than the bezel yeah and uh, when they put the laptops in front of us and like they open up the oled one you just kind of laugh because the LCD one just looks like such crap. And it doesn't really show up as much on camera because on camera yeah. it's like adjusting the iris for the brighter screen and the That's that's true. And that's one of the things like if if you look at the video we posted on YouTube. That and you're viewing it on you know, you're IBS, you're yeah. viewing it on a screen. standard screen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the difference doesn't come through just because of the way the camera tech works, right? So it's something you kinda have to see in person. And but if you've seen uh, an AMOLED phone and compared it to something else, like you know kind of what you're seeing. Like when I first saw that Dell Venue tablet with the OLED screen, it looked awesome. I, I think that's a good example, but I think like a Samsung phone with the AMOLED screen isn't that impressive immediately. Like if you compare it to a know, high man, like the S6 Edge and stuff, like that those, one, yes. Those like, screens, like my look Nexus amazing. 6 is kind of okay, yeah. it's OLED, but you look at a, the S6 Edge especially. Yeah. And it's, it looks remarkable. And like every display we've mentioned is a different type of OLED. We don't know what which one the X1 is, but like it's AMOLED versus the the Dell wasn't AMOLED, I don't think, because AMOLED is a it didn't uh, have uh, so it didn't have a particular because there's like RGBW and RGBG. That's the thing, and you there's couldn't one with white as well. Right? You couldn't or tell. Or RGBW. I took a macro oh, shot of that screen, white. and you couldn't tell the pattern. Yeah. Like all the all the different colors were just coming through. What did you through. take a picture of? Was it a green surface? I took all all colors. Because like there was there was there was there is an OLED that uses has white subpixels as one of its options. Well, right, but even but. like white really didn't look any different than green. Like it was all kind of coming through, a, like a single aperture somehow. Like the way that that screen was manufactured, okay. it wasn't a clear you know RGBG. Kind right. of array, like right. we've taken macro so shots. You're thinking there might have been a layer filter. between. There might be oh, some right. kind of a different structure to that okay. um, OLED, yeah. Um, so either way, it looked awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it made it look really even better. Like oh, the yeah. fact that it didn't have pixels, like right. the colors spread out in front of you, right. and it was more like just a perfect aperture of whatever that pixel was, whatever color it was going to be, it was all coming through that same tiny square, regardless of what color it was. Yeah. Scott brings yeah. it up pentile was the word I was searching for. Oh, pentile yeah. Right, 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 right. yeah. So I, I, I think um, it looked awesome. Um, the machine itself is interesting. So it's the first – is it the first ThinkPad Yoga? No. no think X, first X1 Yoga. Yeah, it's the, first, it's the first time they brought the Yoga design to X1. So you've, we've, before we've just had the X1 Carbon. Yeah, and the ThinkPad Yoga, which was a thicker machine. It wasn't as sexy. It was, just kinda, it was kind of like the get things done sort of right. ultrabook platform. I, I, liked, I liked it a lot. Um, uh, Interestingly enough, we've had that question. That I just screen just went to sleep. So, Josh, we get up and move that trackpad on there. I don't know if I don't know I if don't, we set the power settings to go to I sleep don't, or not. I don't think it's set to go to sleep because okay. even when I shut the lid, it wasn't okay. That's fine. Now sneak back, Josh. <laughs> Great. Uh, the um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, like one of the things people thought is, oh, this is going to save on power, and it was interesting talking with their product guy about like well actually not necessarily because if it's a dark scene with a lot of blacks in it you're going to save power if it's a bright scene with whites in it you're going to actually use more power so right, because the properties power. of OLED is it actually does save power at black because those, those pixels are off and it, it takes up a lot more power the brighter the image on the right. screen so pure white would obviously take up the most all the subpixels are enabled at once. Right. So interestingly, like the the X1 Yoga with the standard IPS and the X1 Yoga with the OLED, um, the OLED had a 56 watt hour battery, and the standard had a 52 watt hour battery, and still, still got still, battery life. And still, the OLED was rated at nine hours, and the IPS was rated at 11 hours. Um, now, the way they do their battery testing is they use a very standard benchmark called uh, Mobile, Mobile Mark. Mark 2014. It uses a lot of Microsoft Office, which has a lot of white backgrounds and everything in it so they're trying to figure out ways to measure it and that'd be something Which interesting if you for think us to of test as well most web pages you have a little white on them they have a little bit of white on them but like like our site has a decent amount of white it is there's a lot of white colors. but then there's gray and blue and like the, so that's somewhere in between mm -hmm. white yeah. and black right and, and how the power consumption it'd be interesting to see power consumption yes. on a white screen on an all blue screen and an all green on a red and then like in betweens because that's um, how people use their computers you know yeah, you just individual static between. images of pure 
green and red. Uh, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Uh, what was the, what was the pricing on it? It was it's fourteen forty nine for the base with an IPS display. Okay. You move up two hundred dollars to get OLED. Okay. So it's only a two hundred dollar premium. It's sixteen forty nine and up. That's what I can fourteen forty nine. I don't know if it's with an i5 or an i3. It's an i5. It's an, it's an i5, i5 with the X. Sure. I thought all the X ones were i5s yeah, and yeah. i7s. It, it's i5, 256 gig, NVMe, SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, I believe. Pretty pretty high in specs. I think 1449 is a little pricey. The X1 Carbon has always been a little bit yeah. pricey. Um, it was higher do, than that at its inception, but it has come down to the point where you can get one for like 1200 bucks. What the clamshell starts at, the non yoga version? I want to say it's twelve ninety nine yeah, currently. I don't, I don't know. About yeah, because the they line. have a they still have an X one carbon that is clamshell that doesn't have the yoga fancy. And it's basically yeah. just a move to six gen Skylake and just yeah. right. Not a lot. You cannot you upgrades. cannot get the OLED version in the clamshell. No, they don't the offer yoga. it in anything but the yoga design for now. Availability, I assume. Yeah. Uh, what else we see there? We saw a Idea Center six ten S, which was like a triangular shaped computer, like a home theater computer. Remind, that was actually really impressive in person. It doesn't show up so well like in the images. Pro. The images we had are stock images, so they don't really show scale. On the video, you can see scale. Right. But it's it's very short. I would say it's, you know, it's, I'm trying to think of what it's, it's about the size of like a, a jar of spaghetti sauce. Sure. It's not very big around. It's yeah. like nine inches tall with the projector on top. Are we talking like Ragu or Prego or? <laughs> Those are the same size, I think. What kind of, what's your favorite? I like Classico. <laughs> spaghetti sauce? Prego. Yeah, spaghetti. It's affordable. Prego. It tastes Yeah, if, it's, if I need something that's just in a, you know, off the in shelf. Jar. Yeah. It's Prego. Comes in yeah. a mason jar, too. Yeah. A mason jar. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so does the Idea Center 610S. Um, uh, it also had a Pico projector that comes with it. Which is, a micro projector. I'm sorry. A micro projector because it had up to 220 lumens. 220 watts. 220 watts would be a lot. Yeah. And it was okay. It did okay. Yeah. Like, you know, we weren't looking at it in like a really dark room or anything like that. It was visible. 720p. 720. Uh, starting at 849 for the device and with that, the projector. Yeah, that's kind of an impressive price point. And they're using the 35 watt Intel chips. Mm-hmm. I'd be more, I, I, like, I wanted to know the price of uh, the version. They have a version that has a 750 Ti, like a GeForce GTX 750 Ti in it. And that sounds pretty interesting to me. First of all, because of the design, I don't know how. I'd like to see how they're getting a 750 Ti. And we asked them specifically, is this like a mobile part? And they said, no, it's desktop. So it's plugged into the motherboard. So looking at the side of this device, there was just enough room to plug like a 750 Ti. It it wouldn't fit a retail card. You don't think so? It would not fit a retail card. There's no way. They're a low profile 750 Ti. Some kind of specific thing. I don't know. Yeah. I bet. We I didn't must, bring our iFix a kit to tear it apart. I so. must say it's probably just integrated on the board, like something where, like the bricks with the integrated uh, Kepler yeah, maybe that's what was. It is. But I, it, what I wanted to do is I want to know the price with that, uh, and they, they you don't want to know the price with that. I do, I do, I still want to do. Um, and at 720p resolution, like if you use that projector, you know, like that's the right graphics. And it's card a short throw, it. isn't it? Or? It is. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they, I can't remember the exact distance, but if you had it at the right, like they claimed a hundred inch. Up to 110 inch, right? But that's got to be in a way darker room, right? Yeah. yeah. I just I don't necessarily know if I see the utility of having a micro projector on your home theater PC because is that going to be your only projector? Like, how do you plug a TV into it? Did well, it's have, got HDMI port. Yeah. Okay. Like the peak of the, you the, have to the live projector. in a very small apartment for that to make a lot of. Also, sense. it's interesting that it's wireless. Yes, the yeah. projector uses it's wireless y, HD, YHD, so it's using 60 gigahertz signaling to get. Across the only thing that was plugged into the projector when we were looking at it was power, right? And even then, it has a battery. Yeah, you can take the. I think it runs for a couple of hours. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I didn't see the battery power on that. But I I think the PC is really cool. I'd like the option to buy it without the projector. It kind of looked like a business machine to me. Like this is what would sit. It's labeled as a home entertainment machine, and you would point it at the you know whiteboard or whatever and project something. Yeah, it has enough power to play videos and. So if we had to pick another interesting thing from Lenovo, what would it be? We saw the the, nine, the Y900? The 710S. Ah, uh, yes, the 710S. Where's that one at? And then that new construction, you went past it. The, oh, okay. The new construction. Um, the y- 900S? Yoga. The, so, they, so the 900S and the 710S. The Lenovo Yoga 900S is a reversion back to getting as thin as you possibly could. The Yoga 900 was like, okay, it turns out you people actually want battery life. Um, so we're going to give you that. And the 900S is like, 
back to very, very, very thin, super short throw keyboard. Um, yeah, it's using the second generation Core M. I that's believe. right. It's Core M part, twenty five sixty by fourteen forty screen, twelve and a half inch, uh, up to eight really, gigs. Really, really light. Oh, super light. And the the lid they're making out of carbon fiber, right? And give the bottom is issues. that magnesium or what is it? Uh, yeah, it's magnesium alloy, but it's yeah. not yeah. lithium stuff. Yeah, it's just magnesium, like they do in ThinkPads. Yeah. So they had that. That was cool. That'll be what was that starting at? Um, Ten ninety nine available in March. So I did. That, I liked it, the coloring touch with the keyboard matching, like whatever color of it yeah. you got. The, the keyboard, the it's keys match the thing. thing. I, yeah. It was neat. Would you like a gold laptop? Now I you can would. Get a PC. That's cool. I think. I think um, more interesting than that one was the seven ten S, the Idea yes. Center or the Idea Pad seven ten S. It's very, very much a direct answer to the Dell XPS thirteen and the uh, Asus uh, X three hundred five. Okay, it's uh, it, it's it's a clamshell notebook. Does do the yoga acrobatics? It can fold. But it flat, does though. fold completely flat. It has super super thin bezels on the left and right, but it has like a normal size bezel at the top because it has a webcam integrated up there, as opposed to at the base that the XPS thirteen does. But it starts at seven ninety nine. Yeah, I think seven ninety nine. That's with an i five. Yeah. It, if you look at it compared to the X three hundred five, similar specs, but you're getting a backlit keyboard. Uh, a really nice display. It was an IPS display. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was um, matte finish, which yep. I'm a big fan of. So you're getting a 13.3 inch 1080p, full HD yeah. IPS display on a really thin form factor. The keyboard felt really good too. The key travel isn't really agreed. It, it depends. Some people don't like a long key travel. Some people do. It felt kind of in the middle, and it felt good. There was a little bit of uh, not resistance, but it felt a little bit clicky. Mm-hmm. I thought it was nice. It didn't squish in towards the middle. It, it was for the construction. Uh, right. I was surprised that the keyboard actually felt pretty solid all the way through. Anything else stand out that maybe we didn't even put a news post up there? I know we saw like a monitor. We saw a 4K Y gig monitor. Yep. Need to write those up. There were two nice monitors there. They had a. They had these weird webcams that like have these articulating arms that come. It reminded me of an old fashioned book light. Yeah. Or, or uh, yeah. what was the uh, the thing at school that that you would write on? Overhead projector. Yeah, like an overhead projector. You could like literally use down. these as an overhead projector. Like yeah, uh, you could set something down like on the desk. Yep. Like a bring it paint. down, and now it's projecting well, up on I the mean, screen. Well, I mean, like in the past, we'll go with ten years. Uh, like they, they started doing document cameras, which are exactly that. It's a webcam pointed down with a light on it on an arm on a surface. Uh, yeah, it did have a light. You could switch yeah. on and off. Like huh. it is exactly that. So if you're recording something and you, you could. Go from the webcam, then point it down to the piece of paper and like point at stuff. Like if you're doing YouTube videos or something. Think of those interesting YouTube videos of a document. Or or like well, you know, like you have the people drawing diagrams and stuff. Like wow. there's cool videos, like the MythBusters type blueprint. A million thing. page views in one. That's true. You, you could do that. Views Maybe you could day. do some sand art. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. could have some real new age music. Out to the beach. And I'd draw Take like your little Yanni. desktop and Zen garden and just it, make a YouTube channel of just <laughs> the design of the day. Yeah. That monitor had it was 4K up to 60 hertz USB 3.1 uh, connection option, um, but it also and it was USB 3.1 like with a Type C, right? Yeah, Type C connector. Yeah. And so it would connect through that. Uh, it could do 4K 60 at that, but if you wanted to do 4K 60 and then use the USB 3 hub in the monitor, you couldn't do that. You would revert back to USB 2.0 speeds. <clears throat> if you wanted USB 3.0 speeds on that hub, you had to go 4K 30. Interesting kind of bandwidth differences yeah, and restrictions there. Frustrating. It's not ideal. Um, they had like a they they partnered with Razer and they had a gaming PC. It was fine. They had a gaming monitor. It was like a sixteen by nine, like really drastically curved monitor. I thought it was it was okay. It was fine. It looked overpriced to me um, in terms of it being a twenty five by fourteen, hundred forty four hertz panel. I think they were. Oh no! It wasn't even twenty-five. It was ten eighty p, one hundred forty-four hertz. I think it was like five ninety-nine or six ninety-nine or something like that. But seems a little high. It was high. It was steep. Um, are, you, are we comfortable with that, Ken? You want to go get up and change power settings? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> our, our streaming machine screensaver kicks in, and like the screen goes black, and now we're all worried. I'm watching the stream on this, so I know we're not completely we're not right completely now. killing it. But um, so that was the only thing we really did on Sunday. We had a nice dinner together. Nice, so dinners. nice. Saturday or oh. Sunday? Uh, no, Saturday. 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 Yeah. We had the nice yeah. dinner. Sunday we had a nice dinner. 
Where did we go there? That was the CPK. California. Oh, we went to CPK on Saturday yeah. night. That's right. Yeah. The old classic. What was our waiter's name down there? Jim? John? Ken like Burns. Ken, Ken Burns? Ken Burns. Ken Burns. Did you, speaking think... of, uh, is, that, is that the photo guy, the videographer guy? He's the documentary guy. Yeah. So he was the marshal of the Rose, Rose Parade. Bowl. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I you saw go to that USC, on I guess. He's kind of a little guy. Yeah. It was really, he's a weird looking guy, actually. He's a little odd. Yeah. Um, mm, thank you. <laughs> so that's all we really did on Sunday for content. No, I appreciate it. Uh, what else has happened? Um, I know we went to go see. You guys went to go see. Be quiet. Yes. Right. Josh uh, and I. And what yes. was the What was the new thing there? Well, it started with uh, a brisk morning walk. <laughs> Josh and I hand, hand in, in hand. Hand in hand. Right. Yes. Um, I had. He, he almost fell a couple of times, and I helped you. Yeah. I kept you from falling. I'll never yeah. let you fall. Well, thanks. Um, so we got to be quiet. It was a lovely suite. Um, they mostly had existing products. Uh, there are a few changes coming up to some of their power supplies. They're going to uh, what they called a stealth color scheme for all the cabling, which was it's a little thing, but it actually made a big difference. When I was looking at it in person because you get these higher end power supplies sometimes that have that don't have all flat cabling, especially for the actual motherboard power. And there are all the multicolored, you know, cables wires showing under right. the sheathing so they're they're going to all black like the individual cables are black the sheathing is black they're going to ribbon style cables mm. for better power or for better cable management so just incremental things they didn't really have uh new products except for their uh 800 series yeah the 800 series case i don't remember the name of it right uh, uh silent yeah i don't remember either and i don't have that listed anywhere uh, just some new colors for that. But their ducted fans were kind of cool so that you don't get any direct yeah, was noise. That? So it it took fans. So it, it, they have uh, openings on the side of the case, and then they duck them around the front, and then they have a d- d- sound dampening material in the front, and then it goes through the fan so that any hmm. noise that the fan makes is pushed into that material hmm. rather than directly out of the case. Interesting. Yes, and I've seen cases that have an intake that has a have a solid front panel before, but this was directly like routing the air, like it trapped the air as it came in the sides, directed it back towards the front, and then the fans pull that air. So there was enough components. space for it to work. We'll have yeah. to see how it goes with temperatures and noise, but it was oh. clever. Yeah. So anything else from them? They were pretty. No. Their twelve hundred watt power supply looks pretty impressive. It yeah. has. Uh, has your power supply guy taken a look at Lee? those yet? Uh, Lee? I think we just got one of those, actually. I don't know if it was a 1200. Might it was the... Uh, they have different series numbers, and that was the 11. That was the Platinum series. Yeah, so it's Platinum rated, and everything about it is like super deluxe. Like They use their highest-end fan, so it's an extremely quiet... Uh, the ends are, are this rubberized material. There's, yeah. there's no metal on the ends where you screw it in. Yeah, so, so you don't need a. It's completely rubber on both sides. It's almost like they go. They're going for the whole uh, like this is our namesake. Antec yeah. did that back in the day. Be quiet. They, they had the, they had the rubber pins that you just kind of the, the put grill the case. over the fan was cool. Yeah, it was like mm. individual wires. Yeah, rather than uh, all in one. Hmm. There's just a lot of neat little uh, lot of little German touches. Their uh, their chokes were uh, wrapped. Oh, that's that's tightly. true. If you looked into the power supplies, you didn't see any of that goop that they put around parts to keep them from buzzing. Hot glue? Yeah. There was nothing. It was just clean. You could see the PCB. You could see the components. And then they were all like Hmm. wrapped in some sort of black material. So it doesn't buzz. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. Shrink wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Shrink wrap. Um, One thing that I totally forgot about uh, was that AMD let us discuss a very, very brief and kind of not a whole lot of information preview of their upcoming Polaris architecture. Polaris. Ryan has buried the lead. I did, yeah. I totally, this should have been the first thing we talked about. Um, so at the early December, I went to Sonoma. We talked with AMD's RTG, the Radeon Technologies Group, and we've talked about some of their stuff over the last few weeks. Um, so they, they, they talked to us very, very briefly about the Polaris architecture. And... Um, there's really not a whole lot architectural that we know about it. 
um, that they claim that there are changes to things like the primitive discard accelerator, uh, the hardware schedule, the instruction prefetch, improved shader efficiency, memory com- uh, compression, etc. They do add HDMI 2.0a, DP 1.3 support, H.265 encode decode support. And this for would example. be the first card with HDMI 2.0a, right? And the first with DP 1.3. No, okay. Yes. Yeah. Actually, for both of those, um, which is important because. None of the Furies have even HDMI 2.0, period. And that's kind of been a thorn in their side. And nothing has anything but each, uh, display port 1.3, 1. 1. right? Right, yeah, nothing above 1.2A uh, plus, whatever they call it. I don't think anything has 1.3. No. Uh, shouldn't Thunderbolt 3? Isn't Thunderbolt 3 technically shipping? I don't know if that's actually 1.3. They might just be 1.2. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Mm. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. So they talk about the architecture. They talk about um, you know the biggest performance per watt increase generation to generation uh, ever in AMD's or in the Radeon history, which is an impressive thing. And it's also a very necessary thing for them where they're at in, in relation to NVIDIA. Well, it's, it's going to be that kind of thing by default because we've essentially – skipped over a regular process node advance. Sure. So, so it would be like jumping from, uh, you know, a 65 nanometer to a 32 nanometer part. Right. So you're insinuating that it's, it's very possible that NVIDIA may still be able to make that claim mm-hmm. when we see their Pascal parts. Yeah. Um, so, for example, when AMD did their comparisons, they looked at a Polaris architecture GPU, unnamed, unpriced, whatever, uh, playing Star Wars Battlefront at 1080p at 60 frames per second at medium preset. So that's going to be a fairly mid-range part, right? And it consumed 86 watts. So that was total, total system. system. Total system. Uh, a GTX, they said the competition would be a GTX 950 running 1080p, 60 frames per second, medium preset. And that was 140 watts. Yeah. Struck at about, what is that, 70-something watts difference. Between those whole system, now that's that's an awfully impressive number, uh, and would be a huge benefit for AMD in terms of upcoming products, either at the high end or the mid range or the low. And what range. is a 950 Ti usually a GTX 950 in terms of watts? It's it's a it's what 130, 140. I was gonna say about 120 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's I mean it, it requires a pin. It's not 75 watts. Correct. Like Correct. It's, it's not. Yeah, it requires a six pin connector. Yeah. So it's an impressive thing, but. Uh, really, so they also talked a huge amount about the benefits of FinFET technology, which we don't have to go into here. This is a CES podcast. We've talked about FinFET forever. 16 nanometer process or 14 nanometer process, depending on which fab you go to, offers a huge amount of power efficiency benefits. Um, the, the real question for us towards AMD for all this is, is how much of that advantage of that power efficiency improvement goes uh, is a result of just the move from 28 to 16 nanometer or how much of it is in relation to the architectural design changes Mm -hmm. themselves because we saw nvidia make a huge jump from uh kepler Kepler to maxwell Maxwell, right and there was the same process node obviously they made some tweaks but that was all architectural improvement yeah that's why it was so impressive at the time that they were able to get that out of the same process node um and so amd is going to have to you know, put their product out there, and and we'll have to see where Nvidia does because they're going to get whatever the advantages of are of sixteen nanometer. Nvidia is going to get the exact same advantages. Pretty much, they're going to yeah. be at the same places, either TSMC or Samsung. Yeah, right, or Global Foundries rather. Yeah, or both. Yeah, whatever. Right, so the advantages are going to be there. People are going to be able to take them, and it's. I think it's. I, I think it's too early to be super. It's not too early to be excited about this, but it's too early to be super excited about one player or the other. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, to Andy's credit, like they're saying, hey, this is a mid-2016 part. Um, I don't know if they're talking about this too early, hmm. right? Like, are they gonna re- are they actually going to have parts out before NVIDIA? Or is NVIDIA going to have parts out first? I don't know. We don't know. We have literally because no idea. NVIDIA showed something off today. They did. Yeah. But whether or not those chips are actually Pascal. Or whether or not... Well, they're not. They said they were running on Titan X at the demo. Yeah, but he held up the... Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, on does the AMD have any silicon? Do they have any? Yeah, they did. I mean, they had they had it up and running. Okay. Right? And it was a small... like It would be a mainstream part that they had up and running. So they didn't show any flagship parts. They didn't talk about... And that's kind of the interesting thing, because... 
no one really knows about high power GPU. You know, on, on this process, process technology. Yeah, I, I'm Correct. 14 nanometer FinFET, or is it 16? Or it's both 14 and 16, depending okay. on where you go. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's ever done this before. Correct. Well, Intel's kind of done it with their CPUs, but they're not 500 millimeter square parts. Exactly. There's a lot more transistors on a GK110 type GPU, right? Than a or even GM Core i5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but and, um, uh, how about those Xeons? They're a little though? bit higher than 130 True. watts. Yeah, well, yeah, the Xeons are pushing it. Yeah, but a lot of that is cash. Yeah, a lot of that is cash. Yeah. Um, you want to talk to us? For a minute, yeah, I was trying to post something so I can. How actually about a talk. Samsung T3? How about actually? It? Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool one, also. So what? What Samsung announced that 850 Evo based portable SSD T3. Uh, we talked about the T1 before. We actually you actually use it here on the strip. Yeah, uh, they skipped T2. They did. Uh, it doesn't translate well. <laughs> well, it was markets. like a Terminator naming rights I, I, that's issue. That's the first thing I thought. I was like, oh, they didn't want to get into the. This is, no, you say no. it's actually like a they pronunciation, said it, they said it, uh, translation they said T2, issue. T2, yeah, something that's like in some countries is bad. So um, <laughs> they decided to skip that one. All right. Um, so what's our T3 here? So um, the T1 was also uh, 850 Evo based, actually. Okay. Uh, it was just MSATA, which is all that's inside there. It's basically a as media controller on a really tiny PCB, right? So this is no longer MSATA? Um, no, the internal, I would imagine it's still going to be an MSATA product plugged into some sort of as media thing but it could very well just be like its own specific pcb that's just you know because I don't, I don't really think they are going to have a need to make a two terabyte version of an msata 850 evo like i think msata is kind of on the downtrend yeah right yeah um, it is. so i don't think they're really going to need to do it that way they might just throw it all on one pcb but well, um it, it, it like we don't know it's an msata do we we don't. That's what I'm saying. So it could be an M.2. But the T1 was yeah an M SATA that was kind of crammed in there. It was. It is not going to be M.2 because that would not fit. An M.2. Is there a shorter M.2 they could have been using, or you don't think they'd be doing it? Even the shortest one is longer than uh, than than an M SATA drive. Than the T1. Yes. Um. Hmm. Anyway, so what they're doing is they're redesigning, uh, the product. Right. So it's a metal case now instead of all plastic. Mm-hmm. Um, it really looks like it's going to still be plastic at the very end. Yes. Um, but, you know, the part that has the port on it, which is now going to be USB Type-C, as opposed to, you know, that kind of USB 3 version of Micro. Right. Whatever the name of that guy is. I oh, keep forgetting. USB B Micro? Um, yeah, yeah. B Micro. or um, USB 3.0. So yeah, it's going to be, be, be Type-C. my rap name. I imagine it's going to come B mm-hmm. Micro. I imagine it's going to come with a cable that goes That's from... That's not a good name. <laughs> I just thought about it. That's not, <laughs> That's not the name of my Be Quiet competitor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. It's yeah. probably going to come with a cable okay. that goes from Type-C to Type-A, so you can actually plug it into <laughs> most stuff now, I would imagine. Um, and uh, the other big difference I kind of already hinted at is they're going to make it a 2 terabyte capacity which is pretty insane to cram 2 terabytes into that small yeah. of a device. Yeah. right? That's, That's true. Yeah. Um, and the only way they're going to be able to do that is with the 48-layer uh, VNAND, which Samsung has been working on, and they kind of told us was coming um, back at the Samsung Summit in right. Korea. Um, so that's the flash that is going to enable 2 terabyte in this, and it's also going to enable the 850 Pro to go up to a 1 terabyte product, because mm. you can only get that in up to a half a terabyte right now. Um, so that's, that's cool stuff. Um, Do they give you any idea about pricing on this? Will it be about the same as the T1? It should be the same as the T1. Because um, it, it just sounded like they were just going to replace the, just supersede the T1 with the T3. Because the, the 256 um, T1 is about 87 99 I think it retails. Yeah, it's, it's pretty competitively priced. Yeah, so to get that much storage that fast, you think about buying yep. like thumb drives? Yeah. I would rather just get one of those. And, it, and, it's, um, and it's doing uh, full drive encryption. You know, it's, it's like baked in. So it's just the controller you has the key. Uh, you can disable it if you want. Does um, Samsung have a backdoor key to that? N- no. Did they Not sell it of. to the NSA? I didn't sell Did it. Did they have a choice? <sighs> I would sell it if I were going to make one. Why would Samsung sell their key to the NSA? they need that money, son. No, no. They don't need money from the NSA, trust me. They need money. Um, That's how they sell them refrigerators. So that's cool stuff. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about this other thing. I don't have a. I'm about to hit post. Ooh, save. And you can mention it real quick. It's fine. Um, so what just went up on the site 
is a this uh, moment. Just this moment. Literally, I just clicked submit uh, and it's up. Oh, I'm so um, exciting. I'm going to go refresh and look. So, uh, one of the things we saw at uh, CES Unveiled, which yep. is usually not that great for storage stuff, yep. and it was pretty much the same this year, but yep. there was one standout, which just kind of floored me. So, this company, Facetto, which previously made, remember that a couple podcasts back, I recommended a company to just like cross platform, get files from one device to another, yes. right? These guys did that before. Like, that's all their website was okay. before, was that type of a thing, right? Just cross-platform, you know, put an app on the thing, scan a barcode from device to device, and we'll send a file from phone to phone or okay. whatever, right? Um, so these guys kind of wanted to step up their game on, like, transferring stuff from device to, to device easily, cross-platform. Sure. So they're like, well, we could just make, like, a, you know, like a wireless NAS thing, right? Which sure. they already have. Like, we've looked at Western Digital, like the wireless passport drive. You know, yeah. the thing with the SD card reader on it and mm-hmm. the hard drive mm-hmm. in it and mm-hmm. stuff, right? And the idea with, of those things is cool. Like, it's a it's a wireless hotspot that it has network-attached storage in it, and you okay. can even connect it to the network. And it's fairly small, right? It's like a 2.5-inch hard drive The size. The Western Digital one was a pretty... Yeah, there was yeah. a laptop-sized hard drive in there, mm-hmm. right? So it's so about it, the size of a smartphone. So uh, not too bad. Kind of, yeah. 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 Uh, this thing, it makes that look... Really large. Okay, yeah, so the picture on the website is is deceiving at first because uh, you don't realize it. If you go to the, if you go to PCBear dot com and look at it, you'll see like a, a card in front of it that says Link. Yeah, and that's a standard business card. Size that is a standard is business a card sized card. That that no, just so that, that gives little you an idea. Thing. Okay. That gives you an idea yeah. of how uh, small it is. It is one point nine by one point nine by zero point nine inches, and it weighs four ounces. I should just it, round it, it up. It kind of looks like the the size of like. The face of an Apple Watch. It's yeah. It's like, like, very like maybe near, the bigger it's Apple Watch. It's very nearly yeah. the footprint of an Apple Watch, like the forty-two millimeter Apple Watch. Mm. Like it's yeah. So this gets you what then? Okay, so now that we've established we've got a tiny <laughs> enclosure, right? What all stuff did they put in there? Well, a uh, quad-core ARM CPU, four gig of RAM, uh, a nine-axis compass accelerometer gyro thing, a uh, wireless battery, a wireless Qi charging. You know, coil built into the base of it. That's how you charge it. That's how you charge it. You just sit it on a Qi charger or whatever wireless, you know, inductive charger. style charger, whatever the catchy Qi. name is for those yeah, things. That's yeah, it's CHI. Um, the enclosure is completely water nope. sealed. Q-R. It's it's waterproof, uh, rated down to forty five feet. So it's just all because there's really no <laughs> ports to plug anything into. There's sure. no like you know you don't have to worry about that. So this thing floats. Uh, it does float. If you drop it in water, it floats. Um, like a, I, they actually had it like a video there showing it, and it, it sits like there's halfway. literally nothing it can't do. It's, it does all sorts of stuff. It starts and your uh, car. here's here's the Did most. You mentioned it has 802.11 AC. Uh, 802.11 AC. Uh, your girlfriend. They, they told me there's a four x four radio in it. I can fit anywhere. Um, Crazy. And they actually but said that it's, it's got a high end router. Built it is into supposed it. to be able to do like 4K the, gaming. It's supposed to be able to do. <laughs> no, no, no. It's oh. VR. But it's yeah. supposed to be able to do max theoretical, like, 3x3, three three, at least, like, 1,300 uh, megabits. How is this possible? Okay. So it's supposed to be able to do all that stuff. And, oh, by the way, there's a 2-terabyte SSD powered by that same stuff I just talked about that's in the T3. Did they have it's any the of these Samsung VNAN. Working? They had one working, mm-hmm. like, functional, with the lights on. So Actually, in that picture, really it's, it's lit up. The other was on a smoke break. Did you look under the table? image. So I they are. What was Alan went into a special room. They just some did some voodoo, powder, and then came away with these impressions. So these guys have made their own OS to run on this. It's oh. probably a, it's probably a fork of some form of Linux. It's selfish, I would imagine. yeah. Um, it, but they're just trying to, you know, they're they're saying they have developers like a beta kind of thing with developers to make like mini apps that this thing can run to. Do like logging sure. from the gyro or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of gimmicky. What? Why does it have a gyro? Uh, they just, it sounded like they were just like, well, we just threw it in there because so we can, could. So you like, throw it with your friends. And, uh, like, well, no, because they, they, you put it in your pocket and now it's a pedometer. The <laughs> idea is like you have someone taking pictures, they're going on a hike, whatever, you can like log your steps, your stuff. But you could just like be built I got like it. three other devices that uh, do I that. I know, I know. But they were just. They why just am like, I hiking with a NAS? <laughs> they just said, hey, why not? You know, it's really good for skipping you know, across lakes. And then they also said they drew the line at GPS because that would actually blow through the battery. Yo, it was did they say GPS what they track. expect battery life to be? Uh, yes. So uh, two weeks of standby um, and uh, up to eight hours of streaming, I think. 
What about like writing media to it? Well, yeah, that's what I wonder because it's like if you're writing at full speed, it would probably kind of blow through the battery. But I, I, you're not gonna I think they it. expect well. you. I think they expect if you're doing that, it's probably on the charger. Like if you're moving a lot of stuff around. Yeah, right? but the charger won't be able to keep up. Well, she I don't is, know. A, is like half an amp. Well, we won't know until we test the thing, yeah. right? Or try it out, right? Um, it's certainly interesting. But it is a whole lot of stuff packed into. And I don't remember the exact prices they rattled off to me, but they are using 48 layer VNAND. So you're going to be paying, like, you know, <laughs> at a minimum, you're going to be paying T3 cost per gig style pricing. But you're going to add, like, a few hundred bucks onto it for this device, right? right? So you're um, saying this might be a multi hundred dollar device? Well, if you, want, if you want the two terabyte model you're paying what for at least what was like 256 or something or? i think it was like 350 or something he said like for a like a 256 gig like that in it or is it no, all there's no, no opening i guess it would have to be yeah because it's everything is internal yeah it's water waterproof this is mm-hmm. like rubberized two buttons on it that are rubberized just like sealed you know and uh and that's it and a couple of led What's this lights again? uh the link is it just a link is oh. it too small uh, I don't. I think that's why they included a belt clip, like that other thing in the picture. Is a belt I'm never going to clip it on my belt. Well, well, what if you got you know your Batman <laughs> utility belt? And you I mean, can it really, really is a two terabyte drive. It really is the kind of thing you throw in a bag, and it, I, and it really just doesn't take space in the bag. Yeah, but there's a reason I don't you buy know. the smallest thumb drive. Like I like. The, it's not that, it's not that small. I mean, you know, I it's, want to not lose it all the time. Yeah. You this want to is, feel that it's there. I, I, yeah. I would say that this is not small enough that you would just like lose it like that. I mean, it's it's got. Let me ask you a serious of, question. Now. I'm, I, I, can you it's take? Not going to be serious. Can you take two of these? Right. And raid, and them. raid them. Wireless. <laughs> have two clips to your belt and raid. So so I need to have like a Batman utility belt with yes. just like they're just all the way Think around. About it. If you put like, these all the way around, you, you just got like twenty. Them all. You just got like twenty terabytes on you, just, Wait, just like walking just around, walking around the room, writing at like three. You know. Gigabytes for sure, 13 I guess. Milliamp hour, 1300 milliamp hour battery. Can I use it Cares? as a belt? But it would be, but it would be like, like 10. stations on you, like around yeah, you. Yeah, the belt has, and then you have a USB pack. That's your buckle. Oh, it's like your big USB yes. charger charger thing. Can, can we go back to Alan's uh, so Halloween costume? Yeah, yeah Halloween costume. Halloween costume. Just a really geeky looking Rain belt. man. Right. Anyway, Chewbacca moving along. So, yeah, it was just a really like, I'm just shocked that they fit that much stuff into that small of a space and it. You know, it d- didn't even. It totally didn't seem like vaporware at all. Like this is like something that's coming that they're already kind of like. They're really, really good vaporware. They already have like a prototype of. So it's just like their 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 main thing was that they're just waiting on the flash to be volume shipping from Samsung for them to be able to do that. But they already like have these things working. Are they working with Samsung then directly, or just Samsung as their they're, supplier? They're sourcing the flash from Samsung. Samsung so like, do they sell NAND to people? Yeah, really? Sure, they do. Like who? Well, People not, not other SSDs? SSD makers, not like that. Okay. What uh, what is their NAND in? But for like embedded kind of stuff or things like this. Hmm. Yeah. I've just never seen a consumer product that we've said has Samsung NAND in it, so it's interesting. Well, I, I think it's it hasn't Apple been until SSDs. it hasn't been until recently that they've opened up that far. But yeah, it's in Apple um, iPhones, like Samsung Fox. Yeah, I guess they. Well, true. It's in the iPhone. Yeah. Apple has yeah. their own controller now, so they're, yeah, they're not buying it, the whole thing piecemeal. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, cool thing. Um, I think it, compared to what we think the other storage news and stuff might be coming out of CES through the show, I don't think there's anything else really, like, groundbreaking or super, like, innovative or whatever. But this might... So this might actually be, like, the most surprising thing out of CES, believe it or not, like, found it on the first day. Okay. Are we taking a... The, the we internet pausing? went down. Let's just keep going. We Like, let's just well, keep I going. And try to... We Get have no control over the internet. Like my laptop disconnected. Oh yeah, yeah. Kinds of control this this one did that too. I mean, we um, can't go reboot the router. All right, so uh, let's see what else. Oh, Josh and I went to go see uh, Nvidia. We sure did press conference. Oh, how was that? Uh, do you want to talk about the other Nvidia meeting first? If we're going chronologically, um, yeah, we could do that. Uh, Ken and I went to go see Nvidia first. Josh, what do you think about that? Mm, I still haven't done any uh, good this VR. One, this one's way way faster though. Um, there's no Pascal news from that. No discrete GPU news. No GeForce news. Um, Shield gets updated to Marshmallow, and we got to see some VR demos. Um, yeah, 
that was it, right? We they were, they were, about they were, Shield going to Marshmallow before, and yeah, I mean, and and the VR demos were actually really really cool. Um, the what did I? We Ken and I both did the Bullet Train, which was an epic demo with the retail version of Oculus uh, and the Oculus Touch. Is it Touch? Yes. I'm pretty sure it's Connect. Oculus Connect is the developers' conference they do. Oculus okay. Touch, Oculus Touch, which are the controllers that you know have one to one motion and all that stuff. It was actually really really cool. Yeah, it's it's really impressive how they map your hands in the game. So you look down, and even though you're holding a controller, like you, manip- you manipulate your hands, and it just like models your hand because they obviously know how you're gripping it because you have to grip the controller a certain way. Right. But just like right. it's really cool to be able to look down in VR and be like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, like and it has it has the buttons in the place for you to like you're reaching down and when you squeeze this you're picking something up and when yeah. you pull this trigger you're shooting and um, it, it was really really neat and then we uh, I tried the uh, the latest version of the HTC Vive with a couple of demos and they all worked very very well um, the only other thing that Nvidia announced along with that is the VR Ready program um, that is kind of like their branding for machines that they validate. Uh, as VR ready, I guess, as the name implies, right? That they meet a minimum specification that pretty much mirrors what the Oculus yeah. minimum specification o- Oculus is. Oculus has their own Oculus ready, I think, program. It's, it's Oculus yes. something. So it's kind of the same thing, but in theory, right. not Oculus specific. So, like, if right. the 5 comes out with a dis- different standard, they may upgrade it right. or do that. So that was our first NVIDIA meeting. And then we had the NVIDIA press conference that Josh and I did. And we knew going into it, it was going to be all car tech. Uh, but it was surprising what that car tech was. Yeah, they uh, announced pretty much right off the bat the uh, the PX2, which is their kind of driving module. It's it's comprised of four chips, uh, two of their Tegras, each with two Denver cores and four A57. So you've got eight A57s mm-hmm. and four of the Denver, which is you know still pretty quick. Uh, so. Seems like they're big little, or do you think there's eight on one chip and four on the other? No, I think they're. I think it's a big little. They're mirrored yeah. chips, yeah. And then uh, they uh, kind of talked about the two Pascal based chips. Uh, yeah. These were on MXM modules, so they had GDDR5. They were not HBM 2.0. Hmm. That's true. That's something we could tell by just looking at what the pictures of the. And they, they look out. like uh, decent sized, you know, pieces of silicon. Well, like. So it's interesting. So there's two of those, two arms. Uh, he claimed that it was a 250-watt power consumption total for the mm-hmm. whole system. So that gives you an idea of, like, each GPU is maybe 100 watts or so. Add in the ARM CPUs uh, and then add in the rest of the componentry. It was a liquid-cooled device. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Liquid-cooled device because it's a, they 250 it's, watts. Yeah, and it's in a, something the size of a lunchbox, as, mm-hmm. as Jensen said probably a dozen times. But it... It needs to work in like very hot environments. Yeah, up where to, normally a car yeah. would would be able to go. Were you surprised that they even mentioned Pascal there? Like that, like that this is the first place that they've mentioned the use of Pascal. Well, kind of. I, was. I mean, yeah, it, it it was. You know, we we figured there'd be a new module, but we thought it'd be Tegra based, like the last one, which was a dual Tegra unit. Right. But apparently, I think a lot of their deep learning stuff and um, the amount of AI that they had to do, it just was too much for those chips. And so they went with, you know, two CPUs and two... These are mid-range, obviously, GPUs. Right. Because, I mean, they're going to fit into that 250-watt envelope with, you know, two CPUs running in there. And you got two, so you're looking around 80 to 100 watts, uh, if even Mm. that, for them. Yeah. Uh, But... uh, Obviously, the the computing needs of the work that they're trying to do was just too much for what they previous thought they could do with you know the all in one Tegra SOCs. Right. Right. Um, the numbers that they went through, sure, it's eight teraflops, but it's something like a bunch more of the uh, the DL tops, you know, the deep learning operations per second that. Uh, they do. Uh, they, and, and, they, I, and I have no idea what that means. Yeah, we're probably going to get into more of that later. But, uh, well, hopefully they get into more of yeah, that later. Because... But what? As a Titan, the the Titan was doing some... Titan X. Titan X was doing some 400 images per second. Yeah, and this one was doing like... 2,400. Right. Yeah. So that's, you know, processing these, these, these images. 
because in their driving thing, they've got what four lidar sensors right. that are doing some thirty six thousand points around them. Yeah, uh, and six cameras: two narrow field of view, one front, run rear, and then uh, four wild wide field of view. Yep, uh, that are uh, you know can surround. The car 360, and so we saw some some neat demos from them of what this can do in, in real time. Like they're driving down the 101 outside of San Francisco, and uh, you know they, they had a control pod that showed you all the traffic around you. So you know your car was in kind of third person, and you could see the cars coming up behind you, where they're at, where they're going. Um, the just a lot of really interesting technology in terms of AI yep. that NVIDIA is working with with the car industry. And, uh, you know, we we'll, might see some interesting products. They announced that Volvo was their first partner with this, and they will be integrating this into some 200 cars for a lot of testing through Volvo, obviously, um, to get this system yep. for them working down. It was surprising to me that, like, so essentially what they, they didn't show it, but I assume this means that NVIDIA has its own car that's been driving around, testing out automated driving. Man, how they not show that? I don't know how they didn't like bring that car out on stage. Yeah, unless uh, it, it can't all be virtualized. Like they they said they were out there recording the data, but it could have been they could have just been recording the data and then putting it in through their virtualized system. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. They can have a lot of recorded data and just like make tweaks to but the they, platform and just but the play way it back they through. brought it up to us. Well, no, they talked they about it. how they talked how BMW and Mercedes all sent them all of this data, and then they went that, through. And yes, so. Yeah, yeah just, but but then when they were testing all the lidar stuff, they they made it sound like this was their yeah their project yeah. Um, so it was a little bit hit or miss there. I do have people who who were watching the live stream. We lost all of our internet for everything. But for you'll get while. to see all of it when you watch the podcast. Right, when you watch later. the podcast on PCBird, we were still recording podcast or our YouTube channel. Yeah, the re- recording kept going. Whether we're live or not, we're always talking, and, and it'll be in higher we're resolution. Always recording everything. Yeah. Ken um, had a really funny joke, so you need to go check it out. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't. So I don't. Yeah. So back on what we were just talking about. How do you pretend that you're all in on like autonomous cars and computer vision and stuff, and not like have test mules doing this stuff and depend only on well, see, that's what simulated I'm, data? So the, what they were getting like, from, like a GTC, they showed us the self parking demo, which was an Unreal Engine. So I, like, they're not, they're not doing not, that. They're not doing that. How they're, are you not building this? They're, what what they showed us this time was okay. recu- so what I think what. They say there's an echo. I have no idea where it's from. Oh, okay. because it, we didn't yeah, change any of the audio, audio stuff. Fine. I think people have more than one thing on. Oh, okay. Um, but the uh, I, I don't know if um, well, if part of the I problem. Think they, is I think they, they had an actual car out driving, and they were recording inputs from the cameras and the lidar. And, but their issue was they needed to demo to us during this press conference yeah. that it was going on without actually having a car out driving. Well, so not they only had that, this application but they to had to train the their deep learning network. That's separate. The deep learning is separate from the car driving. You do all the deep learning before the car moves. No, but well, yeah, but no, they they record all that stuff and they've sent it through the deep learning. And I think but, I But the deep well, learning is separate in that like cuz what he's talking about or what you're talking about I we're getting all the I think the demo data. that we saw was certainly not real time record. I mean, obviously it was Which recorded. One? Where they had all the cameras, the front camera, the rear yeah. camera, the side yeah, camera. Yeah, all that stuff that was, was all recorded. Real time recorded. Yeah, but But it, and it was being But I think sent all put together system. Like the in-car system. So there's two parts to it, right? Yeah. There's, there's the deep learning part, which is a very scientific, a very uh, uh, academic thing of how do you teach a computer how to recognize things. And all that's done offline. Like, not offline. It's done uh, off-car, we'll say. Right? And then you put uh, that I mean, database uh, uh, of recognition yeah. into the car. And then it's the car's responsibility with the PX2 – so what it's called, yeah. yeah, or whatever your system is, is to use that database and recognize things in real time. But it's not doing the learning. It, it, the the learning said, takes Jensen, way more computer Jensen power. Jensen even said at the end, he's like, if, if a car sees something that it didn't see before, it sends that back, they run it through their network again, and then they push an update to all the cars. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the actual learning takes place on... But you still have to have a lot of compute power to do the recognition true, true, in true. real time. But, but you need an order of magnitude more compute power to initially yeah, train yeah, the yeah. network. I, they, it's, just, it's just like they've been talking about this stuff for a year and a half, two years now. And we haven't – like 
So you, you weren't at the press conference, so I, it, I, I don't okay. think I'm explaining very well what what actually happened. So like the demo that they gave that was supposed to say, here is how our car was driving yeah. down the 101 with all of these sensors working, mm-hmm. right? So they, they recorded all the input from all the devices so that they had a way to play it back for us in real time, right? I, I do believe that they had an actual car okay. driving using this technology. It, it seems like a bit nit, of a nitpick. It's just they there are this is obviously a focus, and they need to learn how to demo this stuff better. Well, sure, and I think all of our internet just died again. But um, the uh, oh, no, we're still good. Okay, mine's gone. The the problem <laughs> is, or not I mean that's a problem, but look at what they did last year. Last year they said it was going to be a Tegra processor. And then somebody probably said, uh, "No, no, that's not. No, the, the, that's not no. going to work." And so now <laughs> they're using it on mobile two <laughs> two Tegra processors and two Pascal GPUs. Right? They they've put significantly more work or effort into it this time. Uh, and their goal is to create the platform that everybody else builds yeah, on. It, it, like their strategy makes a lot of sense. And, and, and if Volvo signed on, they're not really a company that I would say um, jumps into these new technological innovations I, actually, very quickly. Volvo is one of those companies with the, the autonomous stuff. They're, well, I mean, the, the, yes. re, the research arm of Volvo for that stuff is like sort of in the forefront. Vol, Volvo is one of the companies leading it. Gotcha. Volvo's legit. You would know. Sebastian would know. <laughs> so, I mean, it was more interesting of a, of a press conference than I thought it was going to be because last year's was pretty bad in terms That's of. That's good to like, hear, at least. This one was still too long. Um, and, and, and droned on in some areas, but it was it was pretty effective at, at getting across what they're doing. Um, but they couldn't get me into the Faraday press conference, and really, that's all I cared yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, so they can see their non as, non road road. As far car. as I'm concerned, screw Nvidia at this point, right? Oh, okay. I, I don't know, Josh. Did you have any other thoughts on like on what the takeaway was from that event? Uh, I think the amount of research and. Uh and the money that's going into this is obviously it's it's big. Do you and think that they can make an impact on it, or is it going to be a Tegra and smartphone effect? Right. That's that's my worry. Is oh, I think they're going to last mo- year. This was a big deal. We can sell a lot of to car manufacturers. I think they're going to make get a big deal because is Ford going to make their own SOC? Is is Volvo? No. Uh, that is going to be able to. Do that kind of power. So right now, it? right now, as I understand it, there are so sort of two methodologies to the autonomous driving stuff. There is the lidar plus ultrasonic sensor stuff that Nvidia is chasing after, and then there's the just using ultrasonic sensors and computer vision cameras. There's was Tesla. Using there's was okay. using okay. lidar, lidar but, but, and computer but, but, vision. But in the Tesla Model S, that's it has no lidar. It is an ultrasonic sensor. The camera just died, I believe. There's a radar. Uh, yeah, it has a radar, but there is no LIDAR in it. No. Oh. And they are using an IC, a ASIC from a company called Mobileye. And, and Mobileye is sort of the other, the main challenger in the space to NVIDIA. And they are currently integrated in cars and working. Okay. So that, that, that's a significant leap, or a significant lead over yeah. NVIDIA in this case. I mean, who knows how it will actually turn out, but... Yeah, but I mean, everything it kind of looks like and sounds like... <laughs> That's a lot of it's a lot of power to do yeah. these real time computations that they want to do as much as as they possibly can. So and, I mean, uh, we can we can cut this and, and do whatever again. But I was just on a train of thought and wanted to get it out. <laughs> Poor Ryan, he's like, get the battery out of the camera. Get the battery. Turns out we were both right or both wrong. It, it can't maintain it. Yeah, we were both wrong. But it, it kept it going because when I turned it on, it was only at two percent. Or ten percent. Well, you probably should have swapped it to a full battery. No, no, no. no. Well, yeah, I, I thought it was going to charge the battery. No, it definitely doesn't charge. It does not charge the battery. Uh, it's not really coming. There we go. Hey. All right. Uh, so back. where do we cut that at? Don't worry. Just, Ken can just go back just and watch it, the entire just thing. Just let it just go black. Notes. You just got to go black for you know a few seconds because you just said the camera just died. So just put up the PC yeah. per low. Yeah, but that was like thirty seconds. Hey, the, the important audio podcast listeners. Uh, yes, yeah. that's true. That's they they true. get the, the full experience. Up, so here's yeah. my here's my. I think that was the old method. Like having there's these two options. The new option. The new way to do it is everything, and computer vision 
is the only way to do certain things because lidar doesn't we'll tell you what a stop sign is lidar doesn't tell you what a pedestrian is right uh it doesn't it can't it doesn't tell you that it is a pedestrian you have to have computer vision to yeah. do autonomous no because directly. if you even think like thirty six thousand points uh think around 360 degrees and paint a large world with just 36,000 mm -hmm. points you're going to get some big structures that you'll recognize but there's a lot of noise yeah. in there well, my, my point was, wasn't that you don't need computer vision it's that you don't need LIDAR you correct but I, I think and, 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 and I think actually integrating LIDAR is going to be one of the like it, it'll either be a major stepping stone into car design or it will be something that never really happens because you have to put a LIDAR on top of the car for it to be effective Pretty much. Yeah, Am my correct? cover's covered with snow. I don't think snow. so. I think you can put them like in front bumper, rear bumper, side panel, side panel. Can I just say for a second, like this is all such early days. Like we're talking yeah. about, we're talking about having an EV that's autonomous that interacts with the current world that has nothing to do with autonomous vehicles. I mean, we, want, we need all this extra sensor technology to interact with the world. When in just a few years, what if every school kid on their way home, on their way to school has a little tag on their backpack that warns any approaching EV? I am a kid. You have to stop sure. if you get near me. Yes. Every and building maybe will every, have a stream of these little road, sensors on it. Maybe All every the road will have stripes on the road with computers in them. Yeah, it will, just sensors something them, right. emitting a little signal. Correct. That's that's that's, that's maybe that would be the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I think I, th I think it's, it's just infrastructure will happen. I think I think technology will solve it before infrastructure has to solve it. Uh, have you driven in Ohio? We barely have roads that function. <laughs> I think I think technology you know will I'm solve it. you know <laughs> you know it's true. Um, so, but, but anyway. so it, I mean, Nvidia is just trying to be like the black box consumer kind of version of this for the deal for the car manufacturer. So they want to just... sell a platform to Volvo, to yeah. Ford, to Tesla that says, look. We have all assets, all facets of what you want. Yep. When you want to build your database, we have the GPU horsepower to make building your deep learning neural network fast. Yeah, because they said, you know, after the data that they have so far done, in one month, it would have taken a regular CPU or say 30x. It, yeah. Yeah. It would be, you know, several years. Right. Like, and that's the learning part where they say, here's a million images of what a, 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 a SUV looks like. Yeah. Now you know what an SUV is. Yeah. Right? Deep learning on GPU is a no brainer. Right. It's perfect. And then, so that's one part. The second part is uh, NVIDIA is like testing all of these different sensors and how they're, you know, how they could all integrate together. And the third part is like getting that module in the car to yep. do the recognition of those devices as they go. And they want to sell that platform. Uh, and he said something I thought was kind of interesting. It's not really related to NVIDIA at all, but he said he that they expect every car company to maintain their own neural network database. I kind like of hope they would merge on that, but okay. The, like there's not like Ford will claim to have the best, safest, best recognition. Like that will be a feature differentiator when you go to buy a car hmm. at some point is like, uh, we have the best uh, network, like we have the best brain in our automated car system, right? Oh, like God. that type of thing, right? I, I, I know we have all have different political views, but I think that might be something the NH, the National Highway Transportation yes. Safety Association well, should maybe do. I but like, I mean, but, but, <laughs> we, but, but we don't have that now. Like okay, there are, there are speed adjusted cruise controls. Yeah. And everybody's technology is different. Yeah, but yeah. I buy I buy a baseline Chevy, so I get worse image recognition than if I buy a Mercedes. So you get like, worse braking right now. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like well, your no, the braking the, br the braking has the to Brimbos. the braking has to be to a minimum standard. Correct. I don't think now, so. if only That's VW true. would share their TDI firmware with the rest of the industry. Uh, don't worry, it's already been reversed listen, by some guy. So, listen, but, I mean, the rest like, of the industry be, is already doing that same minimum, kind of thing. I'm sure. To right? some like, I, I'm, I'm sure that the. Now National, we're in a whole different argument. National right? Highway Transportation the, Safety Administration no, well, will have where, a minimum was, Senate for recognition of like dog, right? car, oh, kid. Yeah. Donkey. Where, donkey. Yeah. Where donkey I was, show. Where I was going was I'm just surprised that NVIDIA wouldn't say, like, hey, like, We'll, we have a lot of these GPUs and we'll be like the back end super awesome database and you guys can contribute they don't to want it. Any, I don't think you want that responsibility. They just don't want to be I don't think you want that responsibility. Okay. Oh, that's definitely not an NVIDIA thing. I don't, I don't no. think you want to be like... No. Yeah, I think you want to you want to you want to make the best technology, and then well, actually, it works better in their favor the other way around because then they're selling all the hardware to be the brain for each car manufacturer. 
right? I they mean, essentially, them. they are. They have they're to just, sell them all that they're hardware. They're the creation of the brain. They're how you yeah, create yeah. the brain for each self-driving car. Yeah. Either way, like again, we're we're, we're off topic, but it was, it was very interesting to see that goal in mind. Um, I don't know. It's it seems like right now, for all that computer vision kind of stuff, like is there even competition? I mean, it just looks like they're the only game in town. So a lot of these car companies have been doing stuff on their own. Like Tesla has their own right, right. deep learning stuff because that's like that's when they released the autopilot software. That was part of the thing is every time like more data comes in, yeah. they do something with it, send updates to cars, I, and you get – I, 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 I think, the, the I think in, in the same – in that vein, the way – the place NVIDIA can be successful is being the hardware provider. Yeah. I don't necessarily think they're going to be the software provider, but – like we have all of these people doing research, be it academic, Uber, e- Uber stealing every top academic researcher in this area, uh, Google. I mean, right. they're not developing a hardware platform. They're developing algorithms and software that Those has to run are. on something. Correct. And yeah. it might be a yep. drive PX. Exactly. And then and, you know, Nvidia is making sure that their software or their hardware is the one best accelerated on all those software algorithms because there's lots of ways to approach neural networks and deep learning and all that stuff cool um so for them i I think it's interesting i just i just don't know i just i can't get past this idea it's like it's like a a waning thing like eh, we're not really gonna do it like oh because of the tiger thing Oh, because that that nvidia isn't gonna do it okay i'm like you have a car that the automated car thing is gonna happen but it's just you know Hey, you know what? Uh, not all auto companies have gotten very deep into this, and some are going to see this as a almost turnkey solution. Sure. No, Which you're right. It's kind of scary, but that's yeah. another thing. As long, as long as it's good, then it's okay. So, I mean, as long as it's good. Did, Is there Jensen, a self-driving Kia yet? No. No, but there could be with this. There will be. There, there's, yeah. there's, that is scary. Jensen did a very good job of like differentiating like <laughs> the hardware will cost more what, than the what Kia. We, but... What he believes that the company can do today okay. in terms of – what was it, the um, – Today we can recognize something. What was the term he used? It was it was very basic types of driving, highway driving, freeway driving. Um, but then the next step in automated is, autonomous is driving is bad recognizing weather circumstances. And, yeah. So it's okay. recognizing um, bad traffic, uh, yeah, traffic, smog, construction, cities, pedestrians. Like that's a whole nother. Pedestrians step. is kind of important. I mean, especially in a neighborhood where you're probably I mean, going to end up when you get done driving. And they demonstrated like how their um, GPUs and technology by feeding it different images could automatically do like multi-class. Uh, yeah, not just not just squares around things, right. but actually colored in yeah. what the road That's, surface that is. That was actually really huh. cool. It, so it colors was, in the pedestrians. It colors in any moving vehicle, so, whether it was a motorcycle every or a car. Pixel was colored based on what it thought it was. Like so, this is the driving surface that I can be on. It's purple. It's like, it's like reverse ray tracing for what you're yeah, looking at. It is, and, yeah. that, and that's how you get like, how do you get a car to recognize that? Okay, the road actually goes this way. Like, he was talking about roads that don't have lane markers. Right, yeah. you're in a backcountry road. Maybe you can't see the lane markers because they're covered by snow or, or there's maybe, construction. And maybe you're being some. Redirected. That's what makes winter driving so fun. <laughs> Am I in the road? Am I in somebody's yard? I don't know. Or even I don't, worse. I don't care. Well, you've, that's a drainage ditch. You've got you've got <laughs> yeah. the lazy highway Oops. workers who have drawn lines not over top of <laughs> yeah. the old ones. So you've got. I, that's the problem. Like, that's the only like the biggest problem I've seen with my Tesla on the autopilot is when. Um, the lane markers are slightly faded, and you know how you get those blacktop stripes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? It it's, tries to it follow that. It starts to see those as lane markers, and it goes, nope, don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing, right? And so you can teach it better than that. Yeah. Right? And and it just takes more This problems. would have recognized that all of that was road. In theory. Yeah. Right? In theory. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about this. We will talk more about it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that really stood out from CES stuff. Asus announced a Zenfone Zoom. It's a Zenfone with a 3X optical zoom on the back. That's kind of a big deal. It's pretty cool. They've been talking about that for a while, right? I feel like I've seen this. Wasn't it out there already? We have seen that They talked about it last year, but they didn't go into any detail. Yeah, they said it was coming. Because I recognize that circle in the back. and that it, For well, a long Lumia's time, you could get a Lumia yeah. with a great optical zoom and a great camera, and you had to deal with Windows phone operating system. So it's kind of nice you can get an Android phone with a 3X optical you, zoom. You don't remember the Samsung Galaxy phones that were basically point-and shoots? Yeah, they a killed, smartphone on they the front of it. their camera. Weird. Yeah. Is, that, is that zoom like just a rotating assembly behind that circle, I assume, that swaps in like a... 
tighter lens. It doesn't protrude. It's not protruding. I know, but it's in the body. Is there something that rotates in the body that I don't know? You know, I don't know the answer to that. Because somehow it's doing the zoom. This right? will be so, three hundred ninety nine dollars mm-hmm. unlocked. It's an Intel based part, like the last Zen phones. Um, hmm. The non protruding zoom I used to have. Yeah, an, an old Fuji camera. The lens actually Hold went. Your microphone. Sorry, the face. lens actually went back <laughs> to zoom instead of you know the yeah yeah yeah. So you you would watch it like disappear into the that's body cool. of the camera. So I think that's what it's doing. Okay. Um. What else we got? I- I think that's it. Corsair Carbide Spec Alpha well, Tower. I, mean, I assume we have a Corsair meeting. We do have a Corsair we meeting. We should probably talk cool. about that then when we actually see it in person. Yeah. Whoa. Can be, the there, Taskmaster. There, I mean, there will be a talk lot more to talk about if you'd like. We did a, I don't know anything no. about it. Yeah, I mean, we, just getting close we did a separate video on the Lenovo stuff. I'm trying. We, already, we didn't talk about that, right? All the Lenovo laptop stuff. and We talked about all the Lenovo stuff. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So yeah, if that that's going to be it for for us for tonight. PCPro.com slash CES. There's more stories there that we haven't talked about on the show. Keep refreshing it every few seconds. Twenty five yeah. seconds or yeah. so should be yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Refresh, click all the ads, and refresh again. In 30 <laughs> right. seconds for the ads. Uh, in all in all seriousness, I do want to thank Logitech um, for for sponsoring us out here. They did an awesome job. They just you know they're easy to work with. And I said I want to bring. Four schmucks and me out to Las Vegas. I said, I said what? Three? And they're like, no. Four. four. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you, Logitech. <laughs> uh, so we, we do really appreciate it. Um, and uh, we have a lot of meetings set up for tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow night sometime. I uh, don't know exactly what time. So make sure you go to pcpro.com slash subscribe and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, and I'll send out an email probably about a half hour or so. Uh, before we actually start, and the even stream. if it's in the middle of the night, there are no excuses. No, you, you just tune into the live podcast. It. Yeah, and, and we had some disconnection issues here. We, I, we can't we'll wire the next time. It's, it's all we'll, part of the the hotel the Wi-Fi experience. experience. We're, we'll try to use an Ethernet connection next. It's time. real life Fi. We'll do that. Yeah, Oof. but hey, I think overall better than, than we've had in the past and other years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys. We'll see you tomorrow for another day. Till tomorrow. Night.